Coach, you get back on out here after the idle week. How the guys look on Tuesday? Well, we've had two really good physical practices. We were physical Sunday night, and we were very physical today. So uh, you can tell us conference play, and we're, we're ready to go. Get going. How, how do you balance, you know, staying physical and trying to keep the guys healthy, but you know, coming off that idle week? Yeah, it's always a fine line, but we're erring on the edge of physicality right now, not, not on the uh, the side of uh, being too careful. It's too early in the year. In our last three years, we've had bye weeks, you know, week nine, so different kind of mindset. But we're not a real good football team right now, and um, we've got to get better. So we got to practice and, and get physical. And you don't stop the run by not being physical, and you don't run football without being physical. And, we have shown the capacity of being able to run the ball and then not run it. And we've shown the ability to stop the run and not be able to stop it. So we're an in inconsistent football team. And inconsistent football teams don't get taken care of during practice. they got to practice harder. Do you think the guys feel any pressure being one and three and wanting to turn that around? Or how do they balance that part of it? You know, we can say they don't. They hear about it. Everybody, they know how bad they've been told. They, they're not any good. They hear everywhere they go. So can't hide from it. It's, it's real. You'd like to say we don't hear all that stuff, but you can't help it. Everywhere you go, you get it. And go go eat lunch. Somebody's going to tell you, you, you. Probably your waiter or your waitress is going to tell you how bad you are. We saw uh, Buffalo Cruz get added to the depth chart this week, but it was at guard rather than tackle. What's sort of the thinking there and how you could factor it? We're just trying to get the best guys out there on the field. Right now, it's where it is. Is it easier for a player to come back at one of those interior positions where maybe there's a little less mobility or... More girth, less exposure. So six of one, half a dozen in another, however that old saying goes. Jared, is it is there rain in the forecast this week? Every day I look it's different, but every time I look it gets worse, so I'm not looking anymore. Yeah. You don't have to do anything special or you just yeah, guys kinda we, we've got the wet ball out there and we're all we're preparing, you know. Uh, I've got, you know, people that keep me up to date on that stuff because drives me crazy. I peak occasionally, but every time I peak, it gets worse, so I told them I'm not looking anymore. They can just tell me. Last I heard, it was 70% chance and going to be 60-something degrees with 13-mile-an-hour wind, so something we don't experience much down here, for sure. They uh, looked pretty good at times this weekend, Temple. Did they, did, they, did they look a bit better than their record indicates? You know, they played good people. I mean, Tulsa's got a good football team. Rutgers is a Big Ten opponent. Plays you know, up there. They, they've been playing each other for years. Miami's, you know, really good. So uh, they've beaten two teams. They've lost three good ones. How has Kevorian Barnes responded to trying to work through some of these fumble issues? What's his mentality been like the last couple weeks? Like anybody, when stuff doesn't go good, it makes you mad and go back to work. You guys have historically started well in conference. What do you think has been the biggest key to that in recent years? The players players that understand the importance, players that have the self-confidence to, uh, you know, all the critics, all the criticism, all the naysayers. Mm -hmm. We've only had one winning record since we've been here in non-conference, so mm -hmm. we're pretty used to getting beat up pretty good. Uh, and then we like uh, keeping receipts and mm -hmm. remembering all the people that said all that stuff. And mm -hmm. We kind of laugh at the end of the year. Jeff, what stands out about the way Joshua Cephas has responded to the call of being the number one wide receiver, not having some of the proven guys next to him he's had the last couple of years? I think he's played really well. Uh, obviously, we we've been through three quarterbacks, so that sometimes that makes the receivers not look as good. Just nothing against Eddie or Owen; it's just three different ones. There's a lot of work that goes into that, so I think he's been really good, honestly. How about some of the young guys at that position? Uh, what's been your impression of the way they've stepped up early in the year? They look kind of like our team. They've all had their moments, good and bad. I mean, you can go through every one of them. At moments, you're like, here we go. And then there's other moments where you're like, what the heck was that? So we're inconsistent. That's just where we are. And I would say those guys are right in line with the rest of us. They're playing for a one and three head coach with one and three coordinators, and we're a one and three team. So uh, we know the conference starts over. So, but we also have to be able to look at ourselves honestly. And, you know, we didn't do well the first month. And uh, get, get a do-over in October. And it won't matter if we don't go self-reflect, address the problems, and uh, never lose your confidence. you gotta, got to talk to yourself. You know, you can't, can't listen to yourself or, or, the, or the haters. Did uh, last week, did any of that self-reflection yield any changes or anything significant you could speak on? Just a sense of urgency. I mean, 
it's it's harder to motivate a four and zero team than it is a one and three team if you got the right kind of culture. And uh, our kids are going for their eleventh consecutive conference win. They're going for their third consecutive conference championship. Nobody's telling them that. Uh, the only one talking about that stuff for us in this locker room. Everybody else is telling them how bad they are. And we'll see how they respond. Jeff, uh, Zay Frazier, I don't think has dressed for you guys yet this season. What's sort of his status going forward? Uh, unfortunate situation there with some uh, an appeal. We're still trying to win, and we, we're still in the phase of trying to win an appeal right now. Over, over what in particular? We'll just keep that in house. It's unfortunate. Uh, no fault of the kid. Uh, so that's unfortunate. How about the um, – we did not get to talk – previously about the university's proposal to increase the student athletics fee. What was sort of your reaction to that becoming a topic of conversation? Um, well, we hadn't done our part. We're one and three, right? So that's not going to motivate people to be too positive. Uh, that was my first thought. Uh, then, you know, there's just such a need uh, in our entire program going to the AAC. And you just look back at the history of this place and how each time, if it wasn't for that, we wouldn't even have football. I mean, people had to, students, the Everybody had to get on board for that, and then you get in a whack, and then USA, and now we're in that AC. It's just such a, a climb, but none of that happens without a lot of people being involved. And, uh, and people think about it just as football, but it's not. I mean, look at our baseball facility. Look at our basketball facility. I mean, you know, there's so many things we need. We've gotten soccer, you know, addressed uh, with facilities, but we just got a lot of things. If we're going to be competitive, and, uh, and I know everybody wants that. We're going to have to get some of that kind of stuff done. Jeff, I know you're focused on Temple, but did you get a chance to watch any of the conference this weekend? And what were your overall thoughts? Obviously. I mean, Thursday night I watched Tulsa, you know, and Temple. And then Saturday, you know, I watched a really good football game, Tulane and UAB. I mean, it was just a great game. And, you know, UAB fumbles on the one-inch line just trying to, as Care Bear says, run the up and over, which is her favorite play. So I was really glad to show her how the up and over went for a fumble the other way. And, uh, but two really good football teams there. And then that night, you know, I watched a really good football game again in Rice and East Carolina. So, you know, I got to watch, you know, six of the opponents uh, just from watching them live. I've only studied, obviously, Temple. Uh, but, you know, you can tell UAB is really good. You can tell Tulane is really good. Rice is good football team in East Carolina. That was a, that was a really good football game. Thank you, Thank you Jeff.